Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be installing this new box and another switch and a larger switch plate. This switch right here controls the inside lighting for this little shed, but I've also got this wire here, this 14-2 wire, ran to do outside lights and we need to be able to turn them on so we got to put in a double gang box so we can have two switches, one for the inside light and one for our outside light. So let's get into it by taking this apart and installing our new box. So quite often I do live work, but today I don't want to because I'm going to need to pull this out when it's live and there is a good chance of it striking something that is grounded. So we're going to find this circuit from in the house. This is my Klein circuit finder. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. So then we turn this on and we just put it on the breaker in the house. As you can see, it kind of finds once you've got it. So, we'll go find this in the house. So I'm pretty sure it's off the old panel. I'll check the new one first. Wouldn't be on those. You're supposed to go all over all of the breakers and then go over them again. Strange, still haven't got anything. Could try it again. Success with these things is kind of variable. One of those ones that's been showing over all of them. I'm getting the strongest signal in 9 and 10, and 10 is spare downstairs kitchen's lights, and 9 is. Nine's part of the split receptacle, so I'm gonna guess it's gonna be ten. Let's go see if that's it. And it looks like we got it. That was nice. You gotta be patient with those things. Go over them a few times. Sometimes turn them off and on. If you just go off the first pass, sometimes you'll get the wrong circuit, which is kind of frustrating, but we got it. So I can begin by taking the old switch plate off of the switch. Then remove the switch itself. Then we can unterminate this switch here. We will take out our neutral here and uncap it so we can pull it out of the box. And we will undo our ground from the box. And pull it back out. I broke that tab forward, kind of made it easier.
Now we will take our new larger double getting box and screw it into the wall at the same height. There we go. Now I can run my 14.3 back into the top. We had a loop going like this. Now that I've got my 14.3, as you can see right here, ran into it, I've made a loop with my 14.2, and I can bend this guy this way so we can go right in to our box. I had this strip here to power it off an extension cord temporarily to test the lights, but... Now I'm going to strip our 14-2 here. When you strip 14-2 or 12-2, if you run your blade right down the middle of it, it will run against the bare bond wire or your ground conductor, and it won't cut the insulation on your current carrying conductors at all. Some people like to strip it before it's in the box. I think it's easier afterwards because the sheathing keeps them all bundled together, but that's just me. So this will be for our outside light. We can put this around our box ground screw. We can put this around our bonding screw. Tighten that guy down. Twist our grounds together here. Now we'll make up our neutrals here, but I'm also going to do a pigtail for our neutrals because I know I'm going to probably be adding some sort of smart switch or timer switch in the future and it will probably need a neutral pigtail. Take a little bit of 14.2 here and strip it so I can take the neutral out of it. I always pre-twist all my connections. I think it's a terrible idea not to pre-twist. Some people disagree with me on that, but I've seen splices go bad very quickly from terminations that have not been pre-twisted, so I don't so I don't do it. Always pre-twist. I like to cut it on a little bit of an angle. Your your marette or wire nut always goes on easier if you do. So this hot here, my always hot coming down, bring the power down to my switches. 
I need to splice this to two pigtails, one to go to my inside light switch and one to go to my outside light switch. And this will be the outgoing power or the switched one for my outside lights and the switched wire here for my inside lights. Strip these just enough to go under the terminals, uh, the receptacles. These have the screw down plates. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you in a bit where you don't actually need to loop it around, around the screw. This is what I'm talking about here. We have the plates that you can put the wire under. Now that's a safe way to do them, or you can do it around the screw. I just don't recommend backstabbing. Those terminations are not good terminations at all. So I'll do my first switch here. That's our inside light right there. And there's my power going into it. Now here will be my switch for my outside lights, this will just be the same thing again. Power going out right there. And power going in on the bottom. Now I'm in Canada and we don't require our switches to be grounded as long as you're using a box like this that has the bonding strap. So as long as your screw is going through there into that bonding strap, this switch is bonded. So now here's how a good termination should look where you don't have any insulation under the screw but not a whole bunch of bare conductor exposed. So I'll now screw these guys in. I always push them all the way over to one side. To make sure that they will both fit under the, the cover plate nicely. And now for our new cover plate. cover plate looks best if you make sure all your screws are facing the same way I always like to do mine facing vertical the slot on them if the switch or receptacle is mounted horizontally then I face them basically the same direction as the long side of the switch or receptacle Now we can check our lights here. Inside lights on. Looks good. Outside lights are not on. Inside lights off. Outside lights on. If you haven't seen it already, I made a video on installing these outside lights as well as installing outside lights on the big shed here and some in a washroom before. So if you're interested, you can check out those videos. So all our switching is working properly. Now, if you found this video useful or entertaining, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, also go check out my Instagram account at Pickle700. And I have some extra videos on there and extra pictures and stuff that you wouldn't normally see on the YouTube channel. So if you want, you can go check that out. Any comments or questions, leave those down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.